guys. Hey, I'm Isabel. I'm Tamara. And this is the Isabel's <laughs> Moon Show. We can't <laughs> not start a video saying that. I um, just realized that I haven't been doing the intros anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels yeah. like it's an end of an era. No. That's so sad. No. Maybe I'll put the intro into this one. <laughs> One, two, three, let's go! If you're new to our channel, please subscribe, stay please. a while. Also, I want to say thank you so much to everyone that's showing love on these daily vlogs. I don't know if this is actually going to be a month, but I at least want to try and get to 10 days. And I'm honestly shocked that we've even made it to <laughs> four. Too. I thought this would end after the first one. So thank you so much. There's like 70 of you that are like consistently watching, which is like insane to us. So thank you so much because that honestly goes a long way on YouTube. Going through the long distance thing, I feel like more now than ever. So I have a lot of questions about this on TikTok especially. I thought we'd finally sit down and film this video because you guys have been honestly asking for this video for like two years now. Yeah. Finally gonna get into it and let you guys know our tips and tricks. If you're new here, we're a queer couple and we have been together for almost six years and we did long distance for three years. It's crazy. Um, I also feel like I have to say that this is coming from a WLW perspective because I feel like this is a video that might be clicked on by like heterosexual, like cisgender mm -hmm. people. And so I feel like our experience being queer specifically, the women loving women relationships start out being long distance. So these tips will still be helpful for yeah. straight couples, but I do feel like it's like, I don't know, a different vibe being two girls. We're gonna go through everything that we've learned through our long distance journey, and we're gonna go into like every subject that we can think of and that you guys have asked us about. So we'll probably go into like communication, trust, being faithful to each other, being intimate, going without having that int intimacy and touch, physical touch, and traveling, that whole thing is a whole different conversation. It's one of the most important things that we always say is communication, but also trust. This could look very different for multiple different people, but for us, it was definitely important because we're not together all the time. So I don't really know what she's doing when we're not on FaceTime. Cause we used to like spend all our time on FaceTime, like <laughs> basically every second, like we were both in college. So we'd be in class for like 45 minutes to an hour. And then as soon as I got out of class, I would call her and I'd be driving home to like do my homework or whatever. And she'd be driving to work and like, we'd always be on FaceTime, so I never really had like any trust issues, but there would be times where she would go out with her friends and I would just stay at home and I would just let her go and have fun. But I think something like that could be tricky because you don't really know what's going on behind closed doors if you don't establish any trust. But I feel like trust is something that needs to happen at the beginning of your relationship. I feel like that needs to be like a conversation, like one of the first conversations that you have because if you can't establish any trust, then I feel like long distance just doesn't work because people can get sneaky and yeah. do things behind your back and you wouldn't ever really know because like They're you can have there. like their location on, but it's like you can tell them, oh, I'm with my best friend at this location, but you don't actually know. Well, I guess we should probably add that we we're like 1200 miles apart so yeah i was in new york and she was in nebraska yeah so and because we were in school we could really only see each other twice a year um winter break and summer break so we only got to see each other every six months and i know a lot of people do get to see each other more often or less so mm -hmm. i feel like that's something we should also put out there and with the trust thing i also feel like um the fact that our relationship started as a friendship for a year, we yeah. really had like a good foundation of trust, communication, and we just really knew each other well. And I Very feel like, comfortable um, with each other too. I feel like even at the beginning of a relationship, we could like talk about hard things and it wouldn't ever like break our relationship up or feel mm -hmm. weird. I want to say too that I feel like people are always like, well, what do you like think, like what advice do you have for trust? And I feel like there's no advice you can give. If you're truthful and loyal to your partner, that's all that you can do. That is the trust. Nothing mm -hmm. 
else other than just having trust but the thing is if you have a partner who isn't truthful and you can't trust them you can't change that that's just yeah. not someone who's ready for a relationship and I feel like people always ask us questions like that but there's no answer it's just like if that person can't commit to you that's not anything on you that's not a reflection of you you gave them your your love your trust your communication if they don't do the same then that's just not a working relationship mm -hmm. so the second thing we want to talk to you guys about is probably like missing each other i feel like for us especially for me i feel like it was really hard because all my friends like had relationships when we were in high school and like the physical touch is like such a big thing in a relationship and I feel like that's definitely my love language like I love to be held and I love to hold you and hug you and kiss really you and right I just it was so weird to not have that and like Tamara said that like we would go six months without seeing each other so it's like we would see each other and then I would like kind of know what she felt or smelled like but then after a while it just fades I'm like I don't even know what my own girlfriend of like two and a half years smells like I don't know what she feels like I don't remember like what her hair feels like like there's just like certain things that you're just like wow like I've been with this person for so long and I couldn't even tell you what her hugs feel like and I feel like that's like really <laughs> depressing especially when that is your love language then you feel like there's a sense of you that's like not being complete and it would it was really hard and i think that also made us leaving each other even harder because we our last days were always so bad or like the days before yeah. we would always go to the movies for some reason and tamara would just cry the whole time there is Ew. a nasty little fly flying Sorry, <laughs> tamara would always just like sob because she was usually the one that had to go back home because she would rather be in New York than Nebraska, <laughs> which I don't blame her. So it was always just like really heavy time. And then it was just like that realization that, okay, well, here we go again. We're not going to see each other for another six months. Maybe, depending on what happens in those six months, that's a long time. You don't know what's going to happen. It was at the very end. Yeah, like the it last was like just, six months that we were long distance. We were fighting a lot. Everything was just like aggravating. And I almost felt like we were going to break up, not because of like falling out of love with each other, but just because it was just getting really difficult. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people are always shocked that we were long distance for three years. And they're like, how were you able to do that? Like, I can't even do it at six months. But that was a time for us where it was like, I don't know if we can continue to do this because Tamara was going through a lot and I couldn't really help her. I was just like, watch from a distance. Cause it's like, what can I do? I, I'm like a college student I can't like fly and I have like all this buckets of money to like go fly and like save her like I was a kid at the time so it was it got really hard and very dark I feel like towards the end another kind of like tip that we did was we always like slept together on FaceTime yeah. but like our phones would either like just be like fried from being on all the time so we'd always wake up and the call was like, disconnected mm -hmm. but then it's like with facetiming that's like gonna be your best friend in a, in a long distance relationship because that's really like your most meaningful time is because you're face to face but through screen but like we would lose connection with our families at the time so they'd be like family members would come in there were so many like distractions and I was kind of figuring out where I was going to go to school next or if I was going to go to school next and that kind of thing and I went on a trip with my best friend for my 21st birthday and on that trip my friend was just like well maybe you should just go with Isabel like because she knows having a, like a hard mental health time too and I was like okay I mean like her dad's like mentioned it before but I just like felt like a burden like living with someone else's family mm -hmm. Then I talked to Isabel about it, and literally I came back from that trip, and two weeks later, I moved in with her and her family. Yeah, I moved in with you in 2019, so now we've lived together yeah, for three crazy. years. Yeah, that's crazy. And if you guys don't know, or if you're new here again, mm -hmm. we now have our own apartment in New, in York, new York City. New York City, yeah. And that was a crazy year. dream. 
for us. I had never thought this would ever happen. It just always felt like a future thing, a future thing over and over and over again. But yeah. I think it helps to know when you're going to see each other next if you can. Obviously. Oh, that was the most helpful thing. Mm -hmm. I think for us too, it was just kind of easy with school because we just did like spring break and then winter break and that just like kind of set it yeah to because we couldn't like see each other during school but i think that helped a lot because it's like okay we could see each other before christmas and have christmas together or we could see each other for thanksgiving break or something but like if we if we weren't in school, I feel like that would kind of be hard to decide. We also did little things like we would go on like little dates. Like we both yeah. did, like there was one time where like it was our anniversary and like we couldn't be together because it was our anniversary is September, so we're both just like fully in school at that point. And I think you went to like the river, and I went like downtown, yeah. and we it was like our one year anniversary or something, and we both just like Facetime each other and like walked around. But like being on FaceTime together I made it a date. I took you to the parking garage sometimes and McDonald's and yeah, we, we, would, we would be very creative. We'd yeah. find ways for sure. Or we would like both go to a McDonald's and we would both order like a McFlurry and fries and then we'd both go in the parking lot in our separate towns but be on mm -hmm. FaceTime and we'd eat it together and it would be like a little date night. It's cute. And it's just like, those are just things that you kind of have to do to make things feel normal. At the time, I was out to most of my family, but I was living with my grandparents at the time, who I didn't necessarily feel safe coming out to. So I would be constantly on the phone with Isabel, but also constantly like anxious and like, like always ready to hide my phone if someone came into my room yeah. because I didn't want them to ask who I was talking to. Mm -hmm. And it made it, I think, a little bit harder than normal. When I lived with my mom when we first started dating, um, I didn't have a care in the world. Like my mom knew I was dating Isabel, and it was no problem. But then when I moved with my grandma, it got a little bit more. I feel like I had to be more secretive, and um, that definitely I feel like made things even harder for me and more frustrating on my side too. Because it was just like I'm trying to talk to you, but I'm also like on edge all the time because I don't know if I'm talking too loud yeah. and someone's gonna hear me. And yeah, especially like my grandpa was like very hard so like if I was on the phone he just always thought I was like doing something that was wrong or like I was getting into trouble and somehow so just like always being on edge kind of on the phone even though that was like our lifeline in that relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. or that part of our relationship last thing we're going to talk about if you have any questions if we miss anything you can ask in the comments and we'll answer but intimacy because obviously when you're apart you cannot be physical in that way mm -hmm. and that's a big part of a relationship is connecting intimately <laughs> i'm trying to use like words that aren't too like explicit let me tell you when you're in a long distance relationship your imagination is your best friend you will get very creative i don't know how far into detail we should go into this but it's basically phone yeah but your imagination is your best friend because it's like very unflattering to like be showing yourself like this with your double <laughs> chin and like talking to each other and like setting the phone up on oh your laptop God, and like pushing it back and getting good lighting and it's just it's really it's a job it was a job but it it worked it works and little v's will be your best friend and imagination i, I don't encourage this um at all because obviously anything could happen but we also trust each other a lot like best friends and lovers forever like full trust like we've never really questioned each other's faithfulness to one another yeah. and we did often like send you know like a little spicy photo a little spicy video yeah. every now and then not necessarily but only do that, that when you yeah. feel like you trust people those people go against people all the time yeah. and do some really sketchy things but I obviously would never do that and she would never do that either so that wasn't ever an issue for us. Something that also kind of spiced things up because yeah. we couldn't touch each other for six months at a time so yeah. it did It's help. rough. I can't even imagine going back to that. That sounds so boring. It like <laughs> so sad. And then the last thing I was thinking of that I feel like you have to go through is a like compromise. Being mm -hmm. able to like it was actually really hard to balance like real life with like 
virtual life. I didn't want to miss out on experiences. experiences. My friends always wanted to hang out with me, and I would say no. I have to hang out with my girlfriend. Huh, In my mind, time. I'm saying I have to hang out with my girlfriend, and then I'm literally like, I hang up with them, and I'm just like staring at my girlfriend on my laptop, and I'm like. This is still special <laughs> in some way. Well, the thing is, is like because you don't have the physical connection being together, we just always felt like we had to like prioritize FaceTiming as often as we could to make up for it. Mm -hmm. And I do think that helped a lot because I feel like if you don't, I feel like if we didn't constantly FaceTime, then we would kind of just drift apart. And I think that's when yeah. people break up because you're not prioritizing the relationship. That's also why we're so close now. Like even now we do the same thing because we knew that we were long distance at one point and we didn't have all these things and now we're like together all the time so it like makes the moments of like quality time even more important. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I feel like when we were long distance, like I hung out with like people yeah. more often than I do now. Me too. And no one talks about like the afterlife of a long distance relationship, like when you move in together finally. I feel like now we're so stubborn with our time and we just like yeah. try to soak in because we just missed out on three years of like being time. together. Yeah. And when we were long distance, like I would hang out with my best friend like every single, not even every weekend, but like every day almost. And so um, I also had to make sure that like I was like balancing, but I also didn't want to like be like, oh, I can't hang out, I'm gonna FaceTime a lot. Yeah. You know, but you also don't want to not FaceTime. So you just have to find a good balance and you'll kind of know if your if your gut tells you like I should stay in and hang out with my person, then you'll do that or vice mm -hmm. versa. And you just kinda know where to place your time because it's a lot of balancing. Because you can't just like roll out of bed, wake up with that person and that was enough togetherness for the day because you don't have that. So mm. You have to kind of like learn compromise and also compromising like um again like Isabel said like money you have to have like money to see each other Ooh, girl you to come to new york city it's like the most famous city in the world mm -hmm. and like even me to go from new york to nebraska was sometimes like a price. lot of money so it was tough yeah um it's really rough. And I want to say this too because I know this happens to a lot of couples and I don't want to encourage anything because I also believe in like self-worth. <laughs> but I also think of like 90 Day Fiance where there's like one person who like never flies the other person. It's always the other person compromising their money and spending to go visit the person. It should be balanced but in our case I lived in Nebraska and it was just like even if I was seeing Isabel in New York in the winter like that was still way more fun and exciting than yeah. if we were in nebraska but isabel also did come to nebraska to see me and i went twice yeah yeah i went twice wow. yeah i just always genuinely i love to new york i always wanted to live here yeah. so, so i always was excited to come but i don't think you should necessarily do that like i feel like there should be a balance or like maybe your partner even helps pay for half of your ticket mm -hmm. or something because mm -hmm. It shouldn't just all be one person like blowing their money on the other one. Yeah. You know? Make sure it's like healthy. And again, that comes with trust and communication. We also trusted each other. So I never thought like me coming to visit Isabel was like her not wanting to see me and like me only putting an effort because we were talking every day and I like, it's just what I wanted to do. I feel like that's important to say because I feel like I see some couples say like, well, I traveled all the time to see them but they never wanted to come see me or I always see too like some their partner just doesn't want to ever meet at all that's fishy that that's probably like a catfish situation and maybe Girl. maybe yeah. like 2022 yeah um do you have anything to add no turkey no hand hug we are this is friends. literally we just sit here all day and cuddle and this is just how we are now and I love it. This is why I would never trade long distance for anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. I feel like it actually gave us such a huge foundation. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we probably, I don't even know if we'd be together if we weren't long distance. Yeah, this is such a like big things would be so different. Like, 
No, but I feel like we wouldn't cherish quality time. We wouldn't. I feel like we just wouldn't cherish anything. Cause like if we went to the same school, lived on the same street, saw each other every day, I just feel like life would have just brought us a different way. Yeah. I feel like this has like really taught me patience and like to like really love someone like with my whole heart and like try and do whatever I can to like make it work and I think that showed each other how much we love each other because that was such a long time that we went through like agony yeah yeah I love you but I I hope this is hope that you can get through the distance and you can move in together you will move in together as long as you have all of these core factors like trust and communication for real that's like all that you need like that's all any relationship needs not even just ones where you're separated and yeah i know a lot of you on tiktok say like we give you hope and that literally it makes us feel so happy because sweetest thing we went through a lot of hard things oh also send each other packages like yeah. randomly send your per- partner a note we would always send each other notes with our perfume on it so we could like remember each other's scents um i would always leave with like either Isabel's shirt or a hoodie or something to sleep with. And then with. she lost them all and I actually I liked did not. them all and I was really mad. I did not lose them you all. You did. And I wore your freaking high school hoodie every day. You were cute. And Valentine's <laughs> Day, couldn't be together on Valentine's Day, but we sent each other packages with teddy bears and Yeah, chocolate. we still have them. Yeah, we do. They're that was like basket. our one year Valentine's Day. That's crazy. Six it's years cute. later. And now we're going to be, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm, oh, I was going to say we're going to get married. We're not engaged, but we, we're going to be together forever. So oh, relationships Lord. that start in, apart in different cities can a thousand percent work out. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell um, button too so you can get notified for our next video and follow us on instagram and tiktok we'll leave everything below linked you know you know the drill love you bye